Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show y'all how I made this uh, little bracelet like jewelry display. Now there will be links down in the video description to all the different tools and materials as well as the template that is very similar to the plain one, the plain template that we've been carrying for years over on our Etsy, but this one has the little leaf hem. So if you have been, uh, if you've purchased one of our older designs, you can just go through and like kind of change the hem of it, but or like that, that line to be whatever shape that you want. But I wanted to go step by step through these different techniques to help you all out with that. So let's get started. So I have traced out my maple leaf edging onto a piece of scrap leather. Um, that's the correct size. You can use fresh leather, but I found this is a great way to use up um, kind of mid-sized odd pieces. And I'm going through now and just carefully cutting out. This is a two, maybe three ounce vegetable tanned leather. You could use an oil tanned or chrome tanned. I like the veg tanned. It's a little bit stiffer, this side is. Some of them, you know, come pre-milled and they're very supple and flexible. Um, if you have that kind of leather or a thinner leather or would like to use um, a fabric or something, I'd recommend cutting this out of thermoplastic. You could use Warbla or uh, Terraflex from Tandy Leather, but I'm a really big fan of the product Foss Shape because it's very much like a fabric until you've heated it and then it holds its shape um, kind of as you go. But you do lose the option whenever you go with something structural underneath that whenever during breakdown whenever you don't have your product on display we're going to be adding the little snap right there but whenever this isn't being displayed we can unsnap it and then stack them and have our booth display use up very little space um so and you can also make it out of a much thicker leather as well and you could leave it plain or you could go through and do a little bit of cutting and tooling. I left this top area here bare um, or plain because I figure whenever we put jewelry on there that'll be kind of where everything's centered up and that way it just tapers in a little bit. So now I'm going to be showing y'all how I did the tooling and texturing on these leaves. And this would be the same for regardless of what size um, display you're making. So I have gone through and used my double bladed ceramic sw uh, swivel blade. You could just use a regular like angle blade or whatever you prefer, but I like how it gives me two lines that are equidistant apart with very little effort um, from my part uh, to just cut some of the little lines where I think I'd like them to be. And then I'm going to go through with a textured bevel foot and I'm just going to kind of walk it along. Let me see if I can't get us a slightly better camera angle. Because I don't want my hand to be in the way, but there we are. And, ooh, but now I'm hitting the tripod. Ooh, the lolly. Okay. And deviating from those original two lines, just whenever I feel like it. Because you can just kind of make the little veins with the bevel foot and you can experiment on some scrap and see you know uh, what you like so just coming through you could also just trace on with pencil if you don't like freehanding um, your tooling just very very lightly you could go through until you get the hang of it. And now I'm going to turn it around and be tooling the other side. Just kind of tapping and dragging the tool along.
and you can be however uh, realistic or fantastical as you'd like to be. It's There's no right or wrong way to do this. This part is just purely artsy-fartsy. Coming around. And now, before I do the rest of it, because you kind of get the idea, I think, um, I'm going to go through with a quite damaged, um, actually, textured bevel foot because I use this tool specifically for this, um, what we're doing here. And that's, I like to set the pear shader, um, sorry, textured pear shader here very close to the edge. And the reason why I've lost some of the texturing there is because sometimes it'll slip off and hit the uh, granite slab. But I'm just taking it and purposefully almost trying to pinch the edges of our leaf here. For those of y'all who are familiar, this is very similar to how I do my uh, edge texturing on the leaf masks that I make. I think I have a tutorial out for that. Oh, see, right there, how it pinches. I like that. Uh, it gives it a little bit of like natural texture, but it wrecks your tool. Um, so just keep that in mind. And almost the wetter my uh, leather is at this point, the more spreading we'll get. And I really like that little bit of spreading and stuff. So uh, yeah, I like to go through and whenever we do our dye job, um, that's going to hold a little bit more of the antique and then I'll be able to highlight in those high points it just it shows off a lot of texture um, now since this is a jewelry display I'm leaving the top area very very plain so it can showcase the jewelry much better but I do want a cute little like leaf textured edge sticking out the bottom so I'm going to go through and do that on the whole hem on my whole stack of displays here. Um, again, you're gonna get deeper detailing if you use a thicker leather, but I'll show y'all whenever we get them finished uh, how the thinner leaves look as well. So we have finished our tooling and texturing, and I'm pretty happy with that. But now I wanna go through and add in just a little bit more character and fun to this. So I'm just gonna kinda twist and turn everything Test and see which way you like, but I like, and then also, you know, try it out and see which way you prefer to see things shaped whenever your display is actually set up. I'm just adding some nice, like, twisting and stuff. Yeah. I like that. Hey guys, so I'm in my airbrushing closet. You can see I have a plastic shower curtain uh, nailed up over the door, super ghetto, but it seems to be effective. Um, this fan will be on whenever I'm airbrushing. This is the airbrush that I'm using. It's very generously gifted to me by Carol. Um, but you can get one if you don't have a Carol in your life. Uh, <laughs> um, you can get yours at Harbor Freight. Uh, it seems to be working just fine. No, cat, how'd you how'd you get in here? Um, yeah, try. I try to not do this with pets um, in the room because I can't make them wear respirators. <clears throat> uh, speaking of which, where did I sit mine down? I am gonna be wearing gloves and a fresh respirator. Uh, this stuff like atomizes. Um, like it's tiny, tiny little molecules of pigment. If floating through the air it will settle on everything like you'll have like colored boogers if you don't like you know like you'll, you'll be able to tell like you'll blow your nose and it'll like be whatever color um, if you don't take precautions so keep that stuff out of your body wear a mask be in a well ventilated area I'd be doing this outside but it's humid and there's bugs everywhere so let's get started uh, yeah so the way that I prepare my leather dyes for airbrushing is I really like the Professional Water Stains by EcoFlow as well as these leather dyes. Um, there will be links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using down below. Um, funnel, coffee filter, airbrush bottle, and I try to just fill that bottle up as much as I can and then have one bottle water one bottle per color that I frequently use and then I'm just going to pour 
a bunch and I'm actually going to do this in my little drawer tray that way it's not going to be falling over on us but I'll usually get a bunch into the funnel I'm just gonna use up the rest of this bottle um, and then I come back in like an hour just walk away from it and when I come back it's usually filtered through all the way um, it's very very important to just go ahead and take the time to do this because if you don't even the tiniest little clumps will just be a huge pain in your butt um, whenever you're airbrushing because you don't want anything to be crudding up your uh, your nozzles and stuff um, I still consider myself really new to airbrushing even though I've been doing it for about a year um, so that uh, there are much better tutorials out there for beginner airbrushing this tutorial is more focused on the actual uh, displays now for these ones I don't do any kind of like prep work or anything I try to have if I want a consistent dye job I try to have all my leather at the same like if they're all damp yeah, like if they're damp I want them all to be damp if they're dry I want them all to be dry like equal consistency because that's going to help us hopefully to get more consistent results as we um as we airbrush so you can see it is slow going but it'll work so I'll meet you guys back here when the bottle's done doing what it's doing Okay, so I don't know how well you can hear me, but I wanted to do a touch of green on what we've got going on here. So I just got a bit of water from the sink that looks a bit scuzzy, but it'll do the trick. And I'm just passing it through my airbrush. Put my finger on the tip. Bubble it. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about getting it perfectly clean because I'm pretty happy to get a little bit of a mix going but now I've got this is the green that I think I showed y'all my glove got stuck uh, whoops yeah it's uh this green and honestly I really prefer this dye it's just a little bit faster to uh, filter and I've got it in there Get a little bit going, that touch of color. I'm gonna hold it like this and just start off of the, I'm gonna start blowing over here and then move in. If that even picks up any color at all. So I'm gonna keep going passes over you can always add more color, but it gets really complicated trying to, you know, kind of undo what you've done. So we'll see how that looks after it's dried. I'm staying away from the center area because not all of the necklaces that I display look good with green, but I do want all of my displays to have this little touch. I think it'll show up a little bit better on this one. Let's try again. Again, there you can see just nice little touches of color 
around the edge. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this to all of my leaves because I want them to match. And uh, then I'll meet you guys right back here. And you can see it doesn't really use a whole lot of pigment. Um, we'll talk more when I don't have the face on. Uh, so I'll meet you guys back here. After letting the airbrushing dry, you can see we have a very nice kind of brown with the green edging going on here. I could still go over this with um, a black antique gel um, or maybe do like a resist first and then do the black antique gel, but I'm pretty happy <clears throat> with the displays just like how they are. So I think I'm going to keep them this nice like kind of chestnut brown color. Uh, but I do want to put a little bit of finish on it. I'm not worried about slicking the edges or anything like that. I like that dry, crinkly leaf look. But I do like to use my Aussie wax or leather conditioner um, that I've mixed in some lavender oil, just because I like the way it smells. Just get a little bit onto the tips of my brush here. And I like to just work it in. You can always add more, but it starts to get troublesome if you add too much, so just little bits here and there. And I, I use this brush specifically only with this product, so um, <clears throat> the, uh, the bristles are pretty, like, logged with this uh, Aussie Wax anyhow. But I like to get both sides. It gives a really nice smell, and it brings out... Just the natural quality of the leather, and it also over time uh, conditions it, you know, keeps it from cracking and things. I think it's just good form to prepare your leather to be put through the ringer. But you can see, I think it gives it a very nice sheen that does matte down. You could also go through with here I have just an oily rag of Neat's Foot Oil, but Neat's Foot Oil can have a tendency to darken down your leather uh, much more than what the Aussie Wax does. But if that's what you're going for, go for it. But yeah, I just, I love the way that that looks. And I'll probably honestly keep um, an oily rag in my loadout equipment, you know, kind of in the top of one of the tackle boxes that I keep my inventory in or something, just to keep these nice and looking their best, even when we're on the road. So now, uh, let's pretend like I've already done that to all of these other leaves, because um, I will, but first, let's set our finishing touches. So we have our hole punch. I'm using a 5 30 seconds inch. I could go a little bit smaller, but I like for it to fit just very comfortably um, for the, I think these are line 24 snaps. I don't know, I'd gotten them in a bulk bag and um, lost the uh, little identifying sheet that goes with them, but they're the ones that are like this big. It's like half an inch in diameter. Um, always make sure when you're cutting, punching holes, that you're using a cutting mat. And I do prefer to do my finishing uh, before I've gone through and punched my holes and set my hardware. <clears throat> I'm just eyeballing it, but I like to have the hole about equidistant in from the edge and the top. Though I, on this one, I'm going to lower down just a little bit. Just like that. And now we can set that off to the side. And now I do have my setter and anvil. I'm going to do the back side first. Like the, and what I mean by that is whenever we have this set, it's going to be coming together like this. And so I want the hardware. You could do this just in the setter. I like to do it on the table because on this one it just sits flat. And what I've done is I just took the little, that part of our setter, 
and I've put it down into the tube and then hammered it and you can see how it made that ring of metal and now it's I mean it's in there so you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to get that out and so now we're gonna go cap down set that right there and then set that onto there again making sure everything's nice and lined up and I'm going to zoom in a bit this time that way hopefully you can see see how that tube is kind of sticking up out of there the idea is, is to curl that down so that it's holding on to that second piece so and I always overdo it but I think that's fine so now this one there's that little brass bit in there so it's still gonna still gonna sound loose but that's completely normal and it just snaps on and now we have our little display and what oh gosh these are I'm really pleased actually um, whenever you're done with it woo! well I guess it didn't set as well as I wanted it to did it uh, let's see if we can avoid having that happen so whenever that does happen, it's always good to test your work. Let's see. Now I'm not snipping anything, I'm just using these cutters because it gets in there, in between the two layers. So that's pinged off. So I'm going to grab the fresh components, fresh decorative cap, and fresh this little bit now I wonder if that happened because my leather's too thick or if I didn't hammer it well enough or if it was just a weird piece sometimes there's no telling but mess ups happen and we roll with the punches so let's try again don't mean to hit the tripod in every single which way. Now it's, it looks good, but time will tell, won't it? Yeah, okay. There we are. <laughs> so, so yeah, if, if it doesn't work out, just do it again. I'm getting on my little my raw hide hammer, I need to moisturize it again, but it has such a tendency to leave like crud everywhere. <sighs> Just comes right off. But I'm really excited about these displays in that they are able to be broken down just flat. Um, and this is so lightweight too. Now you could have, we could have just stuck with foam, but I'm really excited about the durability, the shine, the feel, like just the whole aesthetic of this. Like, I'm very excited, um, even to just use these as a photography prop uh, in my, for like on Instagram and stuff. So now to do like 20 more of these. Uh <laughs> okay, y'all, thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. And um, if you enjoy my free tutorials, but you've already liked, shared, and subscribed, and rung my bell, uh, please consider joining us over on Patreon, where I actually have the digital download for this for, well, not for free, but to like, to like pledges and stuff. Um, we have that over there. We also do all sorts of behind the scenes content and our monthly craft along kits, but we also are on Instagram and Facebook and I don't know, just all the links are down below. Y'all have watched YouTube before. You don't need to hear another spiel, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I will see y'all in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>